Welcome to another video lecture for Math 141 Statistics at Morton College. I am once again your instructor, Dr. Scott Spaniel, uh, and today we're going to talk about section 9.4, putting it together. Which procedure do I use? So this is uh, a type, a section title that we've seen a little bit before in section 5.6, uh, and so the idea here is to take what we've learned in chapter 9 and um, put it all together because in general, um, outside of the classroom, um, when you want to make a confidence interval, you're not going to be told this is the type of confidence you're, uh, interval you're going to make where they're all grouped together. So that's what we're going to look at. So you can go ahead and take out your, uh, oh, and don't, uh, we skipped over section 9.3. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's about making confidence intervals with uh, for standard deviations. Um, we just don't have time to cover everything. And so this is one of the things uh, I decided to skip. It's actually new to the textbook uh, and wasn't in previous editions. So... Um, section 9.4, so this is on page uh, 10 in your chapter 9 handouts. So um, I left a bunch of space here at the top to talk about our options here. So in this class, uh, we've talked about two different um, uh, options um, for commands we could use. So we've got the one prop Z interval, and we've got the T interval. Okay, those are our two uh, basic options. So we're going to want to use one prop Z interval when we're dealing with proportions. And we're going to want to deal with um, T intervals when we're dealing with means. Okay, uh, And remember, proportions can be percentages, uh, things like that too. Um, so when you have proportions and you want to try and use one prop Z interval, there's one thing you need to check, which is N times p hat times 1 minus p hat needs to be greater than or equal to 10. If that's not true, okay, then um, if that doesn't work, then you cannot do the interval. Okay, so that has to work. For means, um, there's two options. We either need n to be greater than or equal to 30, in which case we're good to go. But if n is less than 30, then we need to check for one of three things. Either the population needs to be normal, Or we need uh, the box plot should have no outliers and uh, the normal probability plot should be approximately linear. And similar to what we did, and I'll flip back a page here, when you're doing that last thing, um, you're going to be using this table of critical values uh, for the correlation coefficient to decide if it's close enough to linear depending on your sample size. Okay, so the bigger your sample size, the closer to linear uh, this needs to be. And we'll be referring back to this chart um, as we go through these problems. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples together. Uh, and then I'm going to have you guys pause the video and try the rest of the examples on your own. And then the rest of this video will be me going through those examples to check and make sure we're all on the same page. So the first one here says, in a survey of 1,008 adult Americans conducted April 2nd to the 5th, 2007, the Gallup organization asked, are you worried or not worried about having enough money for retirement? Of the 1,008 surveyed, 567 stated they were worried about having enough money for retirement. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of adult Americans who are worried about having enough money for retirement. So dead giveaway of what we want to start with is proportion, right? So uh, it tells us we want to do proportion, which means we're going to be using one prop Z int, right? Okay. So to do that, we need to first check that N times P hat times one minus P hat is greater than or equal to 10. So in this case, N is 1,008. P hat is 567 divided by 1,008. And then minus 1 minus p at, which is 1 minus 567 over 1,008. So we want to know, is that greater than or equal to 10? Okay. So we can use our calculator to do that. Okay. 
And in this case, we get 248, which is indeed greater than or equal to 10. So we're good to go. So that means we can do one prob z int. So now we are going to use our calculator for that. So we'll just go into our menus here, go to stat, tests, and then it's one, whoops, I clicked the wrong one. We'll be using that one in chapter 10. Uh, but tests, and then make sure you're getting one prob z int. Whoops, which I got it in the wrong screen. So let's just type it out. One prop z int. Okay, and there it is. So one prop z int. I didn't delete enough. So hold on. Okay, now we should be good to go. So now we just put in x, which is 567, our n, which is 1008, and our p value, which is 0.9. I mean, our uh, confidence level, which is 0.9. And so in this case, we get an interval of 0 0.537 to 0 0.588. Okay, so that's from about 53.7% of, uh, adult, of Amer adult Americans are worried about retirement to about 58.8%. So we would expect the actual proportion of adult Americans to fall somewhere in that range. Okay, so that's the idea. So that's one with a proportion. So now let's look at one with a mean. So a police officer hides behind a billboard to catch speeders. Uh, the following data represent the number of minutes he waits before first observing a car that is exceeding the speed limit by more than 10 miles per hour on 10 randomly selected days. Construct a 95% confidence interval um, if possible. So we're dealing with um, number of minutes he waits behind we're given a set of data so that means we're going to be dealing with the mean they didn't come out and use the word mean but if they give you a set of data like this that is not um um if they give you a set of data that is not um qualitative if they give you numbers like this then you're almost for sure going to be using the mean which is a t interval so the first question with a t interval is always is n greater than or equal to 30 in this case it's not Okay, so we're going to have to move on. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check a box plot for outliers. And we want to see is the normal probability plot approximately linear. Which in this case, since we have 10 samples, we want to go back to uh, this table. And we're looking at when the sample size is 10. So the critical value here is 0.918. Okay, so the critical value we're going to use here is 0.918. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do those. So this data I typed earlier is in your 141 no cheat data sets. Uh, it's prop 9.4, problem one. So we're going to copy that and paste it into class calc. Okay, uh, and like I've mentioned before, you could change this uh, letter to a different letter if you want. One glitch that's currently in class calc that may or may not be when you're watching this video is if you change this uh, name to a different letter, this uh, first data value will seemingly disappear. It doesn't actually go away. It's still there. You just can't see anymore. So it won't affect your calculations. Okay, so we're going to do it. Um, first thing we want to do is a box plot of x sub 1. I just type that in, which you can obviously do, um, but uh, you can also go to um, stat, distribution, and plots, and then it's right here, box plot. Okay, and then we want to zoom on it so that we make sure we're actually looking at the whole graph. Okay, so that's fine. And then we want to do a normal probability plot on x sub 1. Okay, and we can zoom on that. Uh, and just by looking at it, you might get the picture that this is not th that close to linear. But if you look at the R value, so if I go back, let's go back to the sheet for a second. So this was fine. Okay, but for our normal probability plot, we get an R value of, which is listed right here, 0 0.885. That is less than our critical value of 0 0.918. So that means we cannot do a confidence interval. So we don't have enough data here in order to be able to uh, 
create a confidence interval. And so that's where this problem would stop because it's not possible to create that confidence interval. Okay, so that's the idea of how this will work. So you check those things on the T interval. So let's do another one. Same idea. So a quality control engineer wants to estimate the mean weight in grams of a random sample of 12 plain M&M's candies. Construct a 95% confidence interval if possible. Okay, so once again here, we've got mean weights. Uh, we want to find the mean weight. So that means we're going to be using a T interval. Okay, in this case, uh, our sample size is not greater than or equal to 30, right? So that one doesn't work. So we're going to have to check the box plot and the normal probability plot. So while what you probably want to do is go ahead and get your um, critical value. Our sample size is 12 here. So if I go into the chart and look, here's 12. So 0 0.928 is the number we need to surpass. So 0 0.928 is the value we're going to use. Okay, so once again, we take that data, which I have here in Google Sheets, and we're going to copy and paste it into class calc. Okay, and the nice thing is if you um, leave these two alone and you just put in your new data table, I already have it to told to do a box plot and a normal probability plot for X1. So it went ahead and did those for me without having to type them back in again. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is zoom in on the box plot. And if we look at the box plot, it doesn't have any outliers, right? There's no asterisk out here, so there's no outliers. And then if I zoom in on the normal probability plot, you can see how close that is to the line. Uh, and in fact, the R value here is 0 0.980. So in this case, the box plot was fine. There's no outliers. And 0 0.980 is greater than... 0 0.928 so that's what we're looking for so this is approximately linear so we can do the t interval so now that we've checked uh those two things and we know that this is approximately normal so we can do the t interval we can do t interval and remember uh, one of the things from class the other day uh is if you're given the mean and median uh you can use this statistics line uh, but if you're given raw data like we are here you want to choose data type in x sub one as where your data is, and then type in your confidence level, which in this case is 95%, so 0.95. And so we get our interval here, which is 0 0.851 to 0 0.894, which in this case, even though it comes out as decimals, is not a percentage because we're talking about the weight in grams. So this is basically um, 8 0.851 grams to uh, 0 0.894 grams is where we would expect the mean weight of M&Ms to fall. Okay. So everybody good with that? So that's the idea there. Okay. So we've done now one with T intervals and one with... Um, one prob Z int. So what I'd like you all to do now is if you flip to the next page, you're going to see there's three problems here with data. And then on the last page there uh, with statistics. Uh, and then on the last page, there's three more uh, that have data. These three data tables, if you're trying this on your own, you can type them out or they are listed in this data sheet on problem three, four, and five. Okay. So at this point, Go and pause the video for a moment and try these other six. Okay, so now that you guys have had a chance to try these other six, let's run through them together. So in a normal sample of 100 estate tax returns that uh, was audited by the IRS, it was determined that the mean amount of additional tax owed was $3,421 with a standard deviation of an additional $2,583. Okay. Um, construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the mean additional amount of tax owed for the estate tax return. So this is a mean, so we're going to do a T interval. Notice our sample size is 100, so N is greater than or equal to 30, so that checks out. So we can do the T interval. 
So now we can just go into class calc and do a T interval, this time with statistics. Okay, so I'm just going to put in my statistics. So in this case, our mean was 3,421. Our uh, standard deviation was 2,583. Our sample size, uh, whoops, sorry. It's not typing. 2,583. Our sample size N was 100, and our confidence level is 90%, so 0 0.90. And so we get an interval of 2,992 to 384. Uh, actually, it'll round up to 50 if I'm rounding to the nearest dollar. Okay, so the range here for this first one would be between $2,992 to $3,850 is the mean amount owed for estate tax returns. Okay, so that's the idea for the first one. The second one. It says, in February 2007, Harris Poll, 881 of 1,013 randomly selected adults said that they always wear seatbelts. Construct a 98% confidence interval for the proportion of adults who always wear seatbelts. So we've got our N, uh, our X and our N. So we want to do N times P hat times 1 minus P hat to make sure that's less than or equal to 10. So that'd be 1,013 times 881 divided by 1,013 times... Um, 1 minus 881 over 1,013. And so when you're putting this in, one thing you could notice here is these would actually cancel, right? Because you've got 1,013 divided by 1,013. So when you're putting this in, you can actually shorthand it a little bit and just do 881 times 1 minus 881 divided by 100, 1,013. And so in this case, we get 100 and 15, which is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so we get 115, which is greater than or equal to 10, so that checks out. So now that means we can do one prop Z int, okay? Which I think I must be typing out more than I need to to get that to go in. But anyway, so we can put in X was 181, our N is 1,013, and we want to do a 98% confidence interval, so 0.98. Okay, and so there's our confidence interval. So our confidence interval says we get 0 0.845 to 0 0.894. So adults who wear seatbelts is most likely somewhere between 84.5% to 89.4%. So that's the idea. So a few more examples. So the next one says 50 rounds of a new type of ammunition were filed from a test weapon and the muzzle velocity of the projectile was measured. The sample had a mean muzzle velocity of 863 meters per second and a standard deviation of 2.7 meters per second. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the mean muzzle velocity. So this is a T interval, right? Because we've got, we're talking about means. Uh, N is greater than or equal to 30 is true, right? Because N equals 50 in this case. Whoops, sorry. I'm doing this without you being able to see it. So here's what I highlighted. I'll pause for a moment while I do that. So we've got 50 rounds, mean muzzle velocity of 863. So since we know all that and we're doing a T interval, let's just get rid of a few things here. Um, we can do it. We're wanting to do a T interval with data. So T interval with, I mean, with statistics. And so we can put in our statistics. So we have a mean of 863, a standard deviation of 2.7, a sample size of 50, and we're trying to do a 99% confidence interval, so 0.99. So the interval we get here is 861 point, well, that would actually, 862.0, right? If I round to the first decimal place, this 9 becomes a 10. So that makes this 862.0 to 864.0. Okay, so the muzzle velocity is between 862 meters per second to 864 meters per second. Okay. 
which once again I realize you can't see because I didn't bring this back up. Okay, so that's the answer we're getting. So those are all ones where you were where you didn't have to use data. So now the next page is all ones where you have raw data. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that the box plot and the normal probability plot check out. Okay, so that's the first thing. So in this case, our n is 12. So if I go back here, we already used 12, but let's check it in uh, this page. So 12 is 0 0.928. So we're looking for greater than 0 0.928 when we do that one. So if I copy and paste my data from this sheet, so we're doing problem three. Then we can zoom in on these. So if we zoom in on the box plot, we see there's no outliers. So that's a check on box plot. Okay. Uh, and then if we, we don't really need to zoom in on this, but if we do zoom on it, we can see that it's fairly linear with an R of nine set 0 0.975. Okay, so that also checks out, right? Because that is greater than 0 0.928. So now we can do our T interval. Okay, so now all we have to do is type in T interval. And we're using data. So choose data and then just put in your list name, which in my case is X sub 1. And then my confidence level is 95%, so 0.95. So in this case, we get... 262.4 to 273.1. Okay, and that's basically what we're going to do for all these. So the next one, start by checking the box plot and the normal plot. Okay, so I'll get rid of this list of data and let's copy in the next list. So problem 9.4, problem 4. Copy that into our class count. And now the nice thing, the way I have this set up is it'll actually do all the work for me for all these things. I just need to check that I could, right? So if I zoom in on the box plot, now box plot doesn't appear to have any outliers. Oh, except I want, sorry, I've been doing this wrong. I need to collect, uh, connect, exclude outliers. So if you look at the box plot now, notice it does have one really big outlier over here. So it does have outliers. And then if we look at the um, R score here, R is 0 0.88, 0 0.882. So in this case, and we check to see what the critical value is for um, 12, right? That's how many data points we had. So that's 0 0.928 again. Wait, is that how many points we had? Oh, actually, we've got 15. So it's even more than that. So 15 is 0 0.939. So 0 0.939 is what we're looking for. And that's a lot less than that, so that doesn't work either. So we cannot do a T interval. So what that means is, even though the calculator has calculated a T interval for me, this is not necessarily accurate because uh, we don't fit the requirements to be able to do it. Oh, whoops. Actually, it may not have as big an outlier as I think. I think I typed one of these in wrong. This one should be um, 136. So let's try one more time just to make sure. Okay, so let's copy. Get rid of this list that's wrong. Put in the new list. And now let's zoom in on the box plot. So the box plot now is okay. Uh, is actually okay. But if you look at the normal probability plot, oh, I, actually, this one is going to work. Sorry, I screwed this one all the way up. So let's try it again. So yeah. So now if we look at the box plot, that's fine. And if we zoom in on the normal probability plot, that's pretty linear. 
In fact, we get an R value of 0 0.971. So that works too. Okay, so these both actually do work. Sorry, I screwed that up. Um, but my data set was wrong, which that can happen. So if you did this, uh, when you guys do this, your data set should be right because I just fixed it. Um, but my data set was wrong, so we fixed that. So it shows how uh, data can create bias and errors in your uh, inputting data incorrectly can screw up how this stuff works. Okay, and so now let's, uh, so for this one, we can do the T interval and it's already given here, it's already listed, except I think, nope, we do wanna do 95%. So that's gonna be a T interval of 101.4 to 117.3. Okay, and so now we can look at the last one. So for the last one, you do the same thing, right? We're gonna copy and paste in our data. So go to problem five. Hopefully I typed this one all out right. Copy that data, paste it in. And we wanna check the box plot and the normal plot. Okay, so if I look at, zoom in on the box plot, uh, it looks like it's okay. Uh, there don't appear to be any outliers. Okay, so that's okay. Um, and our normal probability plot. Uh, that doesn't look that linear to me. Uh, but we have a pretty high R value. R equals 0 0.930. So the key is, what is our limit here? So if we go back in our notes we'll see that we're dealing with 20 this time, so that's 0 0.951. So 0 0.951, and so that doesn't work. That's too small, so that means this one is not possible. I knew one of these was not possible, I just got the wrong one because of my faulty data. Okay, so that is the idea for chapter nine. So um, that's it for this time. Uh, hopefully, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, send me um, a remind message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible and we can have a virtual session if needed. Um, this is the end of chapter nine, so you can get started on the chapter nine quiz um, that goes over all this material and I'll see you next time when we'll start chapter 10.